Hello there. Um, this is Alice and you've got my channel, The Witch in the Glen. Um, I'm really happy that you have joined us, joined me and your spirit guides here in this portal of wisdom. Um, here you will find a message. I'm not sure which message, but there will be a message for you. It might be the whole reading. Um, but this is, if you landed on this deck, this deck, <laughs> If you landed on this reading, um, there is going to be a message for you. So what are you deciding between? You have some, you have some interesting options here. Um, and you're trying to decide like, let's see. Ooh, okay. Tell me more about this. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so it seems here you are sorting out your life and which of the things in your life are high vibrational and which things are low vibrational, which things are of the devil energy. The um, This would be like the lust and addiction energy as opposed to sensuality and um, like carefreeness, um, reliance on self. Um, there's is nothing that's inherently bad in our in our quantum system, but um, the relationship that you have with something can be unhealthy. So what we have here with the devil, um, this is not this is a devil in the upright. So and this is not really a bad card it is um it is it can be a sign of different pulls like that like addictions and um lust and things like that um but it's also you know the devil energy is the other side of the coin hmm. the devil energy is the other side of the coin to your most healthy self so the de the devil energy essentially supports you as you are moving into these higher realms of vibration. It anchors you in a way. That's why we have these chains here. It kind of holds you down. The devil energy is gravity and the um, feminine energy that corresponds to the devil energy, the um, angelic energy is the electromagnetic field um, itself. So um, the devil energy, it pulls you down, it pulls you in, it pulls you into your most, into your densest state. You think about the middle of the earth, everything's being pulled and pulled and pulled in, and everything is gets more and more dense in the middle. So um, we have the center of the earth is iron and it's um, it holds everything together with its density and with its magnetism. So um, the earth is basically a big magnet, as is everything else. But so you are working on trying to discern which of these things in your life are um, of the devil energy and which are of the devil in reverse energy, which are things that are really truly vices and which are things that are for you or which are things that you can actually reappropriate into a healthier relationship with you. So um, if you drink coffee, this would be like, I mean, as an example, coffee. So um, for one thing, just to start off, I don't have an issue whatsoever with coffee. Um, like I'm not telling you that there's anything wrong with coffee. There's nothing wrong with coffee. Um, there's nothing wrong with caffeine. Uh, the only thing that's wrong is when it's, you know, not very ethically or sustainably harvest, harvested. So, but uh, putting that aside, okay, so we've got coffee. So you're trying to figure out, okay, I have to have coffee. I have coffee every morning, but it feels like I have to have it. And it sometimes turns into a chore or it sometimes becomes, um, sort of more of a stumbling block than, than uh, an assistance in my life. And um, so y there's a way to, so there, you're looking at coffee and trying to decide, okay, is this 
something that is true to me or is this something that's riding on my shadow, my relationship with coffee? Um, so we're looking around and trying to figure that out. And sometimes you're able to just tweak your um, interaction with whatever the substance is or whatever the thing is. So with coffee, you're able to say, okay, maybe if I just start buying um, like K-cups instead, then it won't take me as much time to make coffee. And that's really my big hurdle is that it takes so much time to make it and I end up making a big mess. And so that would really be a good solution for me. Okay, so there. Or you might be like, okay, I use way too many K-cups. They're getting plastic in the ocean. Like, I don't even like the coffee that much. It's way too weak. I really miss making coffee with grounds. I just haven't had any time lately. And, um, you know, you might figure out that there's a different way that you can relate to coffee that actually neutralizes the devil energy there. So try to sort out what things in your life are connected and intertwined with this devil energy and which things are you are connected and intertwined with your higher self. So your affection for coffee, for example, that is, that can be, that might be your higher self actually having the relationship with coffee, or it might be your lower self. So you've just got to figure out who, who likes the coffee. And, um, if it's the lower self, then, you know, check out and see if the higher self is interested in taking that over. And if not, it's maybe something that you should decide and decide and discern to push out of your life. Um, this is going to be something that's always, you're never going to uh, be able to complete this completely. Um, you're never going to be able to like fully sort through every single thing in your life and determine with precision exactly which things should stay and which things should go. This is what life is, it's ever, ever evolving puzzle. And so your goal is to more take on the uh, qualities and the attitude of discernment and you take what comes to you and your life gradually evolves its way into a higher vibrational version of itself. Um, this, it takes, like I said, it takes a while to start getting to the place where your discernment is built up. It's a very, very valuable skill and it takes practice. So um, keep, you have to keep working at this and start and keep noticing the, the little tiny feelings that you have that tell you that something is not in alignment with you. So um, this is where you're really going to feel like you become the champion of your own life if you can. Um, really channel the devil energy into into a into fuel that um sustains the flame of your soul so um let's see and and this is this kind of stance when you're embracing embracing your devil energy in order to overcome its control over you, you are overcoming a death energy. You are over, you're overcoming the energy of endings. You're overcoming, see death is something like when something's not sustainable anymore, there is a death. And um, that that is where our devil energy is not, the things that we relate to in devil, devil energy are not sustainable. It's not sustainable. And um, so just like our coffee isn't sustainable, if it's, you know, being made somewhere where we're not even paying anybody to do it and there's not going to be any more, we harvest it too often and there aren't gonna, even going to be any more coffee beans. Um, it's the same, like you have to figure out how to cultivate the things that you really love in such a way as that they are not no longer reliant on the devil energy in order to come into your life and in order for you to enjoy them. So like this is where you take things as they come. Um, you know, if you are feeling like you should, and I'm using coffee cause it's, I feel like it's like 
I just don't want to talk about stuff like alcohol, etc. Because it's just so, um, it's also demonized. So I don't, and I don't want to further demonize any, anything. Um, so I'm talking about coffee because it's a little bit more neutral. And um, I think everyone would like to hear that there's nothing really wrong with caffeine. Um, but yeah, you have to wait. Um, if you can wait until spirit brings you or guides you to uh, the coffee, then you know that it's in line with you. Um, and that means like, when does it feel natural to go make some coffee? In what way would it feel natural to make the coffee? Or if someone, you know, if you were trying to cut back on coffee, but somebody brings you a cup of coffee and you think, oh my gosh, that sounds so good. Then that is coffee that is meant for you. That is, that is source energy bringing you coffee in such a way as it's not riding on your devil demon energy, the addiction energy. It's not riding on that. That's not how that coffee got to you. The coffee got to you because you're living in your best life in the flow. So this is like, don't be controlled by your emotions, but likewise, don't try to control them. You flow with everything and you don't, um, you don't question, you don't, um, and don't cultivate any feelings that are not really yours. Yeah. Okay. And this is really because when you're being pulled along by your lustful, lustful, addictive devil energy, what happens is that, is that source is bringing you gifts, source is bringing you what you need, source is bringing you what you want, it's bringing you your exact ideal life, but you are too consumed with the product that you already have and consumed by focus on it that you don't even notice that there are further gifts coming in. So see, this fellow has three cups here already and he's just sort of like, um, I already have some cups. Like, why are you giving me yet another cup? So it's like this unappreciative, but it's like he has too much, too much to be appreciative of. He doesn't know how to be grateful for the cups that he has. And so when new cups are coming in, they end up going to waste. So this is a complete waste of source energy here. If you go out of your way, to go out of like your sources way to seek the vices, quote unquote, that you really, um, that it's like the devil energy that really wants it. Um, so when you aren't paying attention like this, when you're so consumed by something that is an, is in that unsustainable energy that is when you know i said source can source will be bringing you stuff and that that might be when your um your ten of pentacles like your ultimate success story is maybe coming in for you right now but you are too overwhelmed by taking care of all the things in your life that are good that you can't and overwhelmed by the devil energy that is holding you into this denser, lower vibration that you aren't even able to see or conceive of, much less access this Ten of Pentacles, where all of your abundance is. Um, <coughs> so somebody needed to hear this message. Um, Let's see. This might be our message. This is super specific. Um, 
but let me let me see yeah two cups ooh a love offer hmm <laughs> that seems random and the hermit I saw too okay so I mean the more that you can get into this energy of discerning and weeding out what things in your life are for you and what things are not really for you that is when you're gonna be able to do that best within this hermit energy where you're really focusing on your internal world and um see he's like shining a light in the dark you're focusing on your internal world and your subconscious your unconscious your psyche your um independence and your relationship with source itself that's what the hermit hermit is that's when like your ship is going to start to come in starting with you know everybody everybody craves the amount of partnership and relationship that is right for them. So here we had a two of cups coming out. Um, and here's a six of cups, which is another sweet card. That's like a love offer. And it's like a very childlike love offer. It's sweet. It's, um, it's youthful. It is, uh, vibrant. It is, um, playful. The six of cups and the two of cups, the two of cups is a an offer of romantic love and so is the six of cup is often an offer of romantic love most often but it is a very childlike offer um it is a very a very sweet um innocent uh beautiful energy for love to come in on and for that to for you to get a six of cups energy to come in you really have to be in this place of full relaxation and um and discernment yeah discernment so you get your six of cups when you can be a queen of swords and when you and that's because your person is going to start seeing you as his queen of cups and that's where you're gonna feel i mean you're gonna start seeing yourself as the queen of cups which means that you are deserving of love that you are in touch with your emotions you're in touch with your <clears throat> sensuality you are in touch with your intuition you are in command of um the darkness you have conquered it and she is lives right at the edge of the seaside where at, at the edge of the um shore where the water is lapping up and she sort of floats right in the middle of this she's very comfortable right in the middle of what would otherwise seem like a precarious scenario like is the tide gonna come in or not but somehow we're not really that worried about her because she knows exactly um what she is worth she knows exactly um how to get what she wants she knows exactly how to be a good partner how to be there for somebody she knows how to be there for anybody she's a very good cultural 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 guide um she is um interesting um hang on let me see what that's about Yeah, I mean, Queen of Cups, she can speak any language. Like, she, because she speaks the language of intuition and emotion, she really speaks the universal language of all humans. And that means, you know, she's really, really entrained with our quantum field. She's really entrained with the um, electromagnetic field of planet Earth, which means that she can feel the energy of those around her. She can feel the energy of the earth. She can feel the emotions of those around her and she can help people to process their feelings. And as a partner, she enjoys the most intimacy of any of the queens. And she, and she is 
the kindest partner and she and the queen of cups her partner is also equal to her. She doesn't accept anything less than somebody who can meet her where she is. So um, as you're moving through this energy of, of learning your discernment and incorporating those qualities, just I think this is, you know, your message that you are going to own it with the queen of swords energy that is the energy of discernment of intellect that is see she has her sword just like our two of swords has our sword where she's making a decision up there and trying to discern and the queen of swords is is the source of discernment herself she is able to um quickly slice through an intellectual proposition and she can quickly determine what's for her and what is not for her. And um, when she is ready or when the right offer comes in, when the, when, the, the, um, when the right person comes in, that's when she knows that it's safe to let her guard down and um, move into the Queen of Cups energy. So, um, yeah, <laughs> Page of Cups, cute. Um, Page of Cups, here he comes bringing you. 